myself a tank. I'm working, <clears throat> it's not really mine, it's uh, for my five-year-old. He has a pair of yellow terabillus. There was one out just a second ago and he went and hit, oh, there he is, he's in the back. There, their names are Yellow and Frog. And they have been, they were juveniles when I got them in May. And they're getting pretty near adult size. I think it'll be a little bit bigger, but they've been living in this 10 gallon grow out, which looks a mess right now because it was so grown over um, that I went in yesterday and hacked out a bunch of stuff because I wanted to be able to find the frogs to do this bill. So they've been living in that and they are getting a 20 gallon high, which will give them a lot more options. We've got more driftwood and different things. We'll be able to give them some levels and things to explore, more plants, a little bit better layout. Um, and also, I've been having a lot of problems with that tank growing algae because it's sitting right here next to this window, um, particularly on this side. And so I've done a side, a background on the left side, there's so much glare from this window, Then a background on the left side and on the back uh, with my new go-to for less expensive tanks. You get your tank cost down or just because you like it. Um, these are dark cork tiles like you would get for your office. You can get them off of uh, Amazon or just a variety of places, but the dark ones like this have been heated so that there was no other adhesive used to make the panels. And what I do is I go in and I glue down, and I've actually been using hot glue on my last uh, number of tanks. I tested this um, with my White's Tree Frogs first uh, a year and a half ago or so now, um, and also with my Fire Belly Tank. Oh, that one's actually in my eight-year-old's bedroom. Um, and I actually re-glued a uh, background to that one that I had pulled out of a dart frog tank that was a foam and cork, it's like a foam and cork background that the silicone did. And I was like, well, what the heck, let's just try hot gluing to see if it can hold it up. And it has, and that was about, um, well, that was last spring, so March, nine, ten months ago. Anyway. Um, and it has been rock solid. So um, I've just started using hot glue because it goes really fast and you can do the tank the same day. It is uh, silicone based, but it doesn't have the same odor. Um, and I probably won't move the frogs over today, uh, but I'll probably have this planted up in a day or two and get the frogs moved over. And there's not the odor um, from using like straight construction silicone. Um, where you have to like wait before you can even plant it or you'll hurt the plants. So that's what I've done here. And I've done, again, this is my, these are, this is my inexpensive tanks, right? So you want to get real fancy, you get an Exoterra or you get a sliding panel vivarium with a front opening. But if you're on a budget and you still want a nice looking tank, um, this is the way to go. So here, you know, a 20 gallon tank can hold two frogs of pretty much any species. If you get thumbnails or something smaller, it could probably could hold three or four. Um, 20 bucks on the dollar per gallon sale. The lid is about another 20. I just bought it and I don't remember. And then what I do is I take a single piece of window frame and I attach, um, cut it to size so that it fits inside the frame. And I attach um, this fruit fly mesh to it to keep the flies from getting out. And then I've been uh, hot gluing the mesh directly to the tank frame. And that makes the vent. I got a bend there, but it'll still work. And I've just been lining it so that it sits right up against the glass. See? No gap. And it works quite well. I've got this on both of my 10 gallon grow outs and I decided to just go ahead and do this one this way because I wasn't in the mood to build a tank that was going to cost me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The background is, um, what, 10, 20 dollars worth of cork tiles. I think they were, they were 10 bucks for a four pack. And I bought two four packs and I saw some leftover. So, you know, so I've got 50, $50 in this tank right now. I've got leftover hydro balls. Um, so I mean, if you have to go out and buy some of that, it could start adding up. But you're looking at maybe if you had to buy everything from scratch, like $150 to $200 tank, as opposed to a three to $400 tank, which how somehow uh, dart frog tanks tend to add up to if you're not doing a bunch of them, um, adding the materials together. I also have cuttings of plants from you know this tank from my other dart frog tank. So I won't be spending any money on plants for this. My um, big vivarium, all the bromeliads that had babies, and it's getting quite crowded in there with the pups, so I'll be moving a couple pups in here, and so on and so forth. So, um, if you're doing multiple tanks, this is a, you know, $50, $60 tank. If you're, oh, I did buy some driftwood, but it was probably 20 bucks, so $70. Um, if you're doing all of this from, um, scratch, it's, it's probably about 200 so 
give you an idea. All right, we're gonna build the rest of this tank up and go from there. So the substrate that I made for this dart frog tank is actually the same substrate that I've been making for my moderate humidity enclosure, but I've um, tested it in the dart frog tanks and it's just um, the sphagnum moss that I've chopped up on my cutting board um, in my kitchen like I usually do and then it's topsoil um, and I try to chop it pretty fine so that it spreads out really well. Um, so I have some little tiny pieces and, um, and then I mix it with um, topsoil and orchid bark and this is just the Scott's premium topsoil that you can get at any Lowe's or whatever. It's like two bucks a bag, so it's a really cheap um, ingredient. And then the little pieces of bark that you see in there are, are part of the topsoil. So, um, and what I've done is I've tested it with uh, dart frogs and it has worked really well for about a year now. Um, I expect that um, it will break down um, and need to be topped off at some point, but it's an inexpensive tree fern free solution. Um, and underneath the, the reptile bark or orchid bark that you see there is some sand. Um, and uh, then I've also added cocoa fiber. And what I do is what I've done here is I've gotten it wet, uh, which I do before, um, and I actually forgot to put the cocoa fiber in. So here I've gotten it wet and I'm, I'm making space to put the cocoa fiber in. But, uh, cause I was mixing with a migraine the day that I mixed this bin up. But, um, what I do is I get it wet before I put it in the tank because what I've discovered is it takes a really long time to build the humidity up properly if you try to get it wet after you put it in the tank. So, um, this mix is basically about 60% topsoil and about 40% other. Um, so what I've done with the, with the recipe when I post this, it's like five parts topsoil and then like one part orchid bark, one part sand, one part cocoa fiber, and then like a half to one part sphagnum moss, maybe a little bit more sphagnum moss if you're using it in a dart frog tank as opposed to a Pac-Man frog or ball python. But this mix is working really well for um, all those types of tanks. And it's very, very inexpensive and doesn't use the tree fern fiber, which is something um, I've been trying to see if I could get away from because it's harder to source and there's, you know, some debate as to whether it's an eco-friendly uh, way to do things.